10 things about the NADM-10? Yeah, we can do that. Before we dive in, a word from today's sponsor, Safe and Sound. With 37 years of providing their customers with quality products and service, Safe and Sound is a fantastic option for anyone in the market for anything hi-fi related. The NADM-10 that we're going to be talking about today is rather complex. One of the things that stands out about Safe and Sound is they offer lifetime technical support for anything that you purchase through them. That's a big deal because as hard as I try to follow up with comments and help you guys out, out when you're in a bind or you need assistance or guidance, it's great to know that this company is going to be here to help you out. And not to mention, folks, free shipping on all orders. The website is easy to navigate. They have a wide selection of a bunch of fantastic gear. If you're in the market for home audio speakers, AV receivers and amplifiers, AV components or home audio accessories, headphone amplifiers and headphones, this is the place to shop. Not to mention, they have a killer open box, factory refurbished, B stock, and special section on the site for those that are seeking some killer deals on all of your hi fi needs. So, yeah, do me a solid, guys. Click on the link below, bookmark these guys. If you decide to buy something through Safe and Sound, tell them that Ron sent you, and Safe and Sound, you guys rock. Thank you for sponsoring today's review. Amplifiers come in all shapes and sizes, and the NADM-10 is one of those little black boxes that begs the question, is this thing for real, or is it just another toy? Yeah, the form factor is pretty alluring, and having been around amplifiers that weigh as much as 250 pounds and take up a ton of room, I just kept wondering if this thing was going to keep up with the big boys, and the answer to that question is pretty simple. The answer to the question is yes and no. So maybe it's not such a simple question after all, but hear me out. Does the NADM-10 have the ability to wake up a bunch of speakers without any problem? Yes. Does it compete with every single high-end product that I've ever reviewed in all categories? No, it doesn't. So let's focus on what it can do and what it can do well. And a great place to start is muscle power. So the M10 is rated at 100 watts into 8 ohms or 4 ohms and uses Encore's Class D modules for muscle power. Particular favorites for pairings that got the audiophile juices flowing was the Elac Adante's, which I recently reviewed, and the upcoming review of the SVS Ultras. In both cases, the M10 dished out plenty of dynamics and slam and would satisfy most enthusiasts out there. Okay, fine, so you don't believe me, and that's cool. Uh, well, here is an option for those that are willing to spend the dough. The M10 can actually be bridged to mono, so <laughs> you combine it with a second M10 and now you have 200 watts into eight ohms. Granted, there is one drawback that the manual mentions, and that is you cannot stoop below the 8 ohm rating when bridged, so keep that in mind if you decide to move in that direction. I don't find myself finding a whole lot of flaws in the way this guy sounds. I think it is bona fide hi-fi, for sure. Why then would I say it's not going to beat out some of the higher end stuff that I've reviewed in every single category? That's a great question. Think of it like this. Hi-Fi is kind of like 31 flavors of ice cream. You walk in there and you've got 31 flavors to choose from. So starting with your source, well, do we want to do digital? Do we want to do analog? Okay, if we're going digital, what direction do we want to go? Do we want to do a computer-based system? Do we want to do a streamer? All of these different components you start picking and choosing are going to be your flavors. And then you move on to your preamp. Okay, well, would you like solid state? Or would you like tubes? Oh my gosh, those are gonna be different flavors. Now we move on to your power amp. 
same questions. Tube, solid state. If we decide to do tubes, what kind of tubes are we talking about? By design, this can't beat out some of the hi-fi rigs that I've heard in every single category because functionally, it can't possibly do some of the things that those other rigs can do. I'm not looking at the NADM10 as a replacement piece for all of our hi-fi rigs. I'm embracing this for what it is, which is a very compelling digital system that anytime I just want to set up something very quickly and easily without even messing with the big rig, set up Bluetooth and play some movies and just relax and chill out, I reach for this every single time because it's easy. The connections on the M10 are robust and it's pretty impressive. As long as you don't mind working with the Blue OS as the primary hub, the connections on the M10 all make sense. As an example, while the M10 does have USB on it, its intended function is to be used with an external hard drive to store all your media, music, so on and so forth, and it's indexed and organized by the Blue OS application. Now, for those that do have other digital devices, the M10 also includes optical and coaxial connections. Toss in some other analog inputs, which we'll talk about in a minute, and you are good to go. Yeah, so this little microphone is included with the NADM10, and it plugs into USB jack as well. And you use this for room correction or room measurements. They were smart about what they threw in here, why they threw it in here, and it makes this pretty dang versatile as an integrated amplifier. Let's run through some of the other stuff right now. One cool feature the M10 offers is preamp outputs. So for you guys that want to try the M10 running into a power amp that you already own and like, that won't be a problem at all. I keep thinking, this opens the doors to some interesting options with tube amplifiers for those that want to warm things up a little and still leave the front end as a digital hub. Well, 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 and here we were just talking about the 31 flavors of hi-fi, and it sounded like I was excluding the NAD M10 from that amazing lineup of flavors. NAD responds by saying, Ron, we put in preamp outputs, and that was very smart. I'll say this, it's not going to open up the door to every single flavor out there, but if you happen to have power amps laying around that you love, you're going to be able to plug those into the back of this bad boy, and guess what? Now you're bringing some new flavors to the table, and you're going to be able to explore some really interesting options out there. Two power amps, no problem. Solid state, class A, class A, B, class D, it doesn't matter what it is. With that preamp output, who knows? you might discover something really interesting. And the cool part about it is all of the feature set that you're gonna find in the NADM10, it remains intact, which is totally killer and makes Ron from New Record Day very happy. So let me ask you guys a question. What is better than one subwoofer? Well, that is easy. Uh, two, of course. And with the inclusion of dual sub outputs, the M10 is ready to rock and roll. Again, along the lines of connections, NAD was not messing around, and with the additional control in the Blue OS operating system that lets you set your crossover points, yeah, things just got pretty serious for subwoofer junkies. Yeah, so no commentary needed. Anytime I see any kind of a pre-amplifier or integrated amplifier with one subwoofer output, ugh, ugh. Again, super smart connections when it comes to the NADM10. So NAD, good job. Dual sub outs. Yes, please. Also included for advanced users is Dirac Live. Uh, the basic version that ships in the box doesn't cover all frequencies. So listen to me, make sure you pay the reasonable 99 bucks and unlock the entire suite. Yeah, so even though this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step guide of how to use Dirac, there's a couple of key things that I want to talk about. The first thing that I needed to verify is if the corrected response, meaning after I've done the room correction, is the response that they're showing me in Dirac, is that what you actually end up with? The answer to that question is, well, in my case, no. It's definitely better, so don't draw any conclusions based on what I just said. Here is what I was looking at with the SVS Ultras before. And here is what it looks like after. 
So another thing that I want to try is what happens if I take that microphone and I move it off axis? So if I'm trying it, you know, to the right, to the left, do we end up with anything less than a linear response? And the answer is no, which is a good thing. So this is where a lot of the hardware and software that I've used in the past, it just, it was awful because yeah, it corrected what you're hearing on access, but as soon as you move that microphone, it just kind of falls apart. And in this case, it doesn't. So that is definitely a good thing. Not only was it linear in the horizontal plane, I actually tried moving it up. So in this case, when I took my measurements and I moved that microphone up higher, it's still linear. So the truth is that it seems to be doing exactly what it says that it's going to do, and it seems to be doing a very good job. Now, one other cool feature that Dirac offers is you can set up what's called a curtain. And the way that a curtain works is you can say, I only want you to correct certain frequencies. So you open and close this curtain on whatever the target is, the frequencies that you want Dirac to correct. And in my case, I do have some issues with bass, not crazy issues, but where I found a happy medium with Dirac is I could set up a curtain to say from zero up to 80 hertz, those are the only frequencies that I want you to correct. Now, your room is gonna be entirely different, so you may have totally different outcomes than I do, but in my case, if I do that and I, I leave the rest of it alone, I gotta say, that for me sounds great and i've been very happy with just correcting those lower frequencies leaving the rest intact and the results have been phenomenal so really cool feature with the curtains another thing that makes dirac very compelling and it's really just another tool that the nad comes with that i can see a lot of people using if they're in rooms that don't have an option to do any kind of acoustic treatment or you're in a room where you've tried all the acoustic treatment out there and you still have some problems, I think you're gonna dig what Dirac has to offer, for sure. So I've already hinted at this, but the Blue operating system is both user-friendly and intuitive. Not once have I had it crash or any kind of strange issues like dropouts or anything else to be concerned about. When I first got the NADM10 and there wasn't a hardware remote in there, I was thinking to myself, that's weird, I'm gonna hate that. And now that I'm done with the review, looking back at that initial first impressions and thinking that way, it's silly because everything I need is in my phone or it's on my Mac or it's on my tablet. And the Blue operating system is very intuitive. It's easy to use. You can find what you're looking for very quickly and you're not having to find a lost remote. <laughs> for the NADM-10, so yeah, it's rad. I totally dig it. To say that I love Rune is an understatement, and with the NADM-10 being a Rune endpoint, my digital life is pretty much complete. This final feature is what pushed me over the edge to just cough up the bucks and buy this thing. All I needed to do was add the M10 to the same network as my Rune core, and just like that, I was in hog heaven digging deep and getting lost in the music. That is the honest to goodness truth. That was the last and final feature that they threw in here that I thought, this thing is, it really does feel like it's an amplifier from the future. Is it worth the asking price? Here's gonna be the argument down below in the comments section. At the price of the NADM10, there is other gear out there that will either be a rival or come out in the lead and potentially sound better than the NADM-10. And guess what? They're probably right. They're probably correct in saying there is stuff that is even cheaper than the NADM-10 that will potentially best it if we're talking about just sound quality. I think that is true. But let me ask you this. Whatever that item is, and please let me know in the comments section, whatever that item is that you have in mind that is going to be better than the NADM-10, ask yourself this question. Does it come with even half of the 10 features that we just talked about in this review?
Probably not. I hope you liked this review. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. I certainly do appreciate it. All the links that you're going to be looking for, they're in the show notes down below. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.